Good evening. Welcome to this special meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. It is Monday, May 24th. Could we have the roll call, please? Chair Swift Kayata? Here. Councilor Guvenali? Here. Councilor Jordan? Here. Councilor Lennon? Here. Councilor Sherman? Here. Councilor Sullivan? Here. And Councilor Walsh? Here. The pledge? I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Town Council reports and correspondence. Hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, citizen opportunity for discussion of items not on the agenda. The only thing on the agenda this evening is a public hearing on the proposed budgets. So if you would like to speak on anything other than the budgets, please come forward. No one's coming forward, so we'll move on. Um, tonight, we, as I said, we're holding a public hearing, as is required by our process, on the um, proposed municipal school and special funds budgets for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2010. There are no agenda items other than the public hearing. We will be, the council will be taking action on the proposed budgets at a special town council meeting tomorrow, Tuesday, May 25th, here in the council chambers at 7.30 p.m. So before we start the public hearing, I'd uh, just like to um, refresh people's memories as to what the rules are about a public hearing. Any person wishing to address the council should signify their desire to speak by uh, coming forward and approaching the lectern. Please speak only from the lectern because there's a microphone there and um, that way people will be able to hear you. Uh, when you're recognized, please give your name and address or name and local affiliation if the aff affiliation is relevant <coughs> Excuse me. prior to making your other comments. All remarks should be addressed to the council, um, so please face us so we can see you. Comments should be limited to three minutes per person. Uh, I don't think it's going to be an issue tonight, but the chairman in the town uh, council rules, uh, one of the rules is that the chairman may decline to recognize any person who has already spoken on the same agenda item. We usually do that when there's a, a long uh, wait and a lot of people addressing the council, but unless we have a huge influx in the next few minutes. I don't think we're going to have a lot of people speaking tonight. The last thing I'd like to mention is under the section called decorum, the rules say that persons present at council meetings shall not applaud or otherwise express approval or disapproval of any statements made or actions taking, taken at a meeting. Persons at business meetings may only address the council after being recognized by the chairman and only at the lectern. And the reason for the applause and disapproval, approval thing is that not only does it take time, but sometimes it can have a chilling effect on other people who may be thinking about speaking. So those are the rules. Uh, if there is anyone here, I'd like to declare the public hearing open. If there's anyone here who'd like to speak, please come forward. Good evening. Thank you for holding this public hearing tonight. My name is Mary Ann Lynch, and I live at 2 Old Colony Lane. I'm here tonight because despite the worst economic times since the Depression, you are poised to adopt a school budget that defies reason and is not supported by the facts. And I'm deeply disappointed in this school budget. In this proposed budget, salaries and benefits are increasing $1.1 million. The average pay increase next year in the school department will be 5%. The school population, on the other hand, has been steadily declining from its peak in May 2006 when 1,847 students attended Cape schools. Next year, the population is projected to be 1,687, approximately a 9% decrease in student enrollment. As a result of the decrease in enrollment, the pupil-to-staff ratio has decreased from seven students per staff person 
in 2006 to six students per staff person now. I went back and I did a little more checking and the ratio in 2000 was just about the same that it was in 2006. Coincidentally, I have a son who graduated in 2006 from the high school. He's graduating this year from college with high honors in philosophy. I dearly support a quality public education and I'm forever grateful for the education that taxpayers provided to my children. And I'm also grateful for the many talented teachers who guided him for 13 years. I have nothing but the highest regard for all of our teachers. But reducing pupil-staff ratios from 7 to 1 to 6 to 1, I have to ask you how much is enough? Will you be going next year to 5 to 1? If the school department had simply maintained the same pupil-to-staff ratio as, as existed just four short years ago, there would be no need for any tax increase. Let me repeat that. If you maintained the excellent student-staff ratio of 7 to 1 that existed four years ago, there would be no need for a tax increase. For most of us living in the real world, the last few years has brought unpaid furloughs, pay freezes, even pay cuts, and that's if you're one of the lucky ones. If you were unlucky, your mortgage is underwater, and maybe you or a loved one has become unemployed or underemployed. I'm not going to ask you to change your position on the budget, but I am going to ask the public to look carefully at the budget if it remains unchanged after tomorrow night. I would ask the public to ask themselves whether in the face of steeply declining enrollments, we should have a pupil to staff ratio that rivals area private schools. Ask yourself whether a 29% increase in spending per pupil over the last five years is really necessary. Ask yourself whether you received a 5% pay increase this year, and will you receive a 5% pay increase next year? If the answer to these questions is no, then I suggest you take a hard look at this budget. I believe that our children can and will receive the very best public education even if the pupil-to-staff ratios were returned to the levels that existed from 2000 to 2006. I thank you all for your service to the town and for your time and attention tonight. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to speak? Better move fast if you want to speak. Yes, ma'am. I'm Ruth Ann Haley. I live at 49 Brentwood Road. And I don't have such a nice, eloquent, prepared speech, but I really thought that someone else should come up here and thank uh, those counselors who agreed that this school budget was too high and this is not the right time. We have curriculum that's, that's slipping and the results are evident when you look at the Maine Department of Education. We are still great, we do a good job, but we're not doing as good a job as we should be. We should put our time and our money into the classrooms. The teachers are wonderful, but our money is going to the union benefits. We pay for insurance and raises when other people are not getting them. And I am a union contract person. Someone opened my contract and, and froze my raises for two years and then asked me to increase my contribution to my insurance. A little nervous. But I think you need to take a reality check. People are in foreclosure and they are losing their jobs. And we are not putting our money into the classrooms. So I just want you to think about where our funds are actually going 
what we are actually supporting in this district and wondering why in the best district in the state, Kuhlman Learning Center is flourishing. I think our priorities are not as clear as they should be because we're so busy saying, yes, we have to support the schools, but what are we actually spending our money and our time on? Where are our priorities? just like you to think about that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Going once? Going twice? Okay. I'll declare the public hearing closed. Thank you very much. Um, this is not the evening the council uh, makes decisions about at what number to put on the ballot. Um, so those decisions will be made tomorrow night when, after the council has had a chance to think about all the input they've received from the public, both tonight and previously. And um, so we will be deciding, uh, making any decisions tomorrow evening. So I thank you very much and the people who have written emails and sent in letters and made calls to all of us. And um, we will Adjourn. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay. Great. We'll see some of you tomorrow night, I presume. Thank you. Okay.